Pickup trucks have always been interesting vehicles in my mind. They used to be purely utilitarian in nature, but the past 15 years has seen them kind of morph into these rugged versions of family SUVs, with heated electric seats, space for five, and dual zone climate control, this Ford Ranger is no exception. But can a pickup really be like a car? Or do their inherent traits hold them back just a little too much? Let's find out. My name's Tom, and you're watching Paragon Cars. Let's go. Before we start, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you'd like us to keep bringing you this content. Also, don't forget to follow our socials for updates on our stock. Links in the description below. Now, while most pickup truck power plants are your bog standard diesel engine, the one in this Ford Ranger is just a little bit more interesting. This is the 3.2 litre inline five diesel. It's got that lovely five cylinder thrum, which for me just gives this thing a bit more character. That thrummy engine produces 197 brake horsepower and 470 newton meters of torque from just 1500 RPM. Nord 60 is dispatched in just over 10 seconds, so let's see what happens on the 30 to 70 sprint. Well, it got there eventually. <laughs> We managed a time of 10.42 seconds, which puts this Ford Ranger second last on our lead board. For motorway driving though, it is just about good enough to keep up with the pace of faster traffic. Now then, the interior. This is where I think things could have been done a little bit better. It lacks cohesion, you see. It's like there were two teams fighting over what should go where in here. Take the heated seats, for example. Not only can you control them from your nav screen, you can also control them with a button. Like why? Just have the buttons. There's then a nice stitched leather dash that then connects to some of the cheapest plastic I think I've ever seen in a car. Like all they had to do was copy the Ford Edge's interior and whack it in this. It's like a group project where one guy does his bit really well and the rest just kind of bug it off home. Big comfy electric seats, but a steering wheel that only goes up and down. Like really Ford? Come on. You've then got a cooled centre console with an armrest on top of it that feels like it's going to fall off at any moment. Not exactly hardy, is it? Anyway, you get my point. Thankfully, the rear is actually fairly decent. You get another 12 volt socket, plenty of legroom slash headroom, and a rather nice armrest with cup holders. But what you really want to pick up for though is its loading bay. And well, uh, it's actually smaller than the Amarox. Although it does have a liner, so yeah, beat that. The other thing the Ranger does really well is towing. In fact, it's joint class leading at 3.5 tonnes, whereas the Amarok can only tow 3.1. We won't be doing any towing today though. I'm more interested in how car-like this pickup can be. It still has the Ford badge after all, and they do seem to know a thing or two about handling. Let's get on the road then, shall we? Well, this is quite the appropriate day to be reviewing one of these, isn't it? This is actually my first ever pickup truck. So it's going to be interesting to see how this differs from a normal car. Driving around town then, does it feel any different? Well, the first thing I'm noticing is that the rear suspension is solid. <laughs> it feels like it's just connected directly to the chassis and there's nothing in between. But that's mainly because it's obviously leaf spring. So when you do put stuff in it, it's going to feel a little bit more comfortable in terms of ride quality. The front suspension is fine though, steering is nice and light. The only other major thing I'm noticing is that this car is a big boy. It is very, very wide. It's actually wider, I think, than the Range Rover I reviewed last week. And you do notice it, it is massive. It really does feel like I'm driving a truck. But it's appropriate. It feels very utilitarian, and I guess it should. There are a couple of gripes I have with this interior though, but we'll get onto that later. 
throttle pedal and brake pedal feel identical to a normal car. I mean, why would they feel any different? As I said, steering is nice and light yet precise. Ford are very good at steering though, so some other pickups might feel different. Automatic gearbox is kind of weird in this. It uh, seems to hold on to gears for quite long, although that could be because of the torque curve of the engine. Um, but yeah, so far, it's like driving a big van, I guess. Currently, we're just sitting in two-wheel drive mode as it saves a bit of fuel. Uh, we will go into four-wheel drive mode later on just to see what the difference is. Uh, but for now, I'm going to leave it as is. Now then, parking. This, uh, this is an issue for this car. <laughs> Even though we have a reverse camera, yeah, it's not the easiest thing to park. You've got plenty of steering lot, but it is just huge. We've got a reverse camera and parking sensors. So this is best possible case. I mean, I guess if you're trying to hitch something like a trailer, it's not too bad. But looking in my mirrors, I can see we're, we're not really even in the space. <laughs> this thing's just too big to drive around town in. And you can imagine if you're like trying to find a space in a car park, it's going to be pretty difficult to get out of the car once you're even in the space. Let's see what this Ford Ranger is like coming out of junctions. Half throttle. <laughs> and because uh, we're in two wheel drive mode, it starts doing a burnout. <laughs> When it's wet like this, you should really just leave it in four-wheel drive, even if you are just driving around town. It does make it a little bit smoother, but two-wheel drive is fun. Anyway, let's reset our trip computer and see what MPG we can get. It does say online we should be able to get around 34 miles per gallon out of this thing on the combined cycle, which is not bad, um, especially for a big five-cylinder engine. And the fact this thing is just huge. Right, there's no drive mode in this, but I can put the gearbox over into its sportier setting. So hopefully we get some slightly faster shifts, because in drive it kind of just feels like it's one long gear. It almost, almost feels like a CVT. Not going to turn the traction off yet, just because this car doesn't inspire the utmost confidence. <laughs> Still a... My god. Yeah, two wheel drive mode means zero grip, especially with tyres like this. I'm glad I didn't turn the traction off there. Very, very sketchy. Anyway, whilst we're getting acquainted with how this thing handles, let's get on the motorway and uh, see if we can get 34 mpg out of this thing. Well, it looks like there's been a bit of an incident on the M25, which is unsurprising when it's raining like this. Um, so I'm going to have to figure out a slightly different way to get to where I need to go. Otherwise we may be here a while. Be back in five minutes. Right, so since the M25 is absolutely buggered, we're going to kind of do this review the other way around to the way we'd usually do it. We're going to do handling first and then motorway second. So let's get the gearbox into its sportier setting. Still not going to turn the traction off yet. We're in two wheel drive. Let's see what it's like. Now, whilst this engine is very utilitarian in the way it sounds, once you're higher up in the rev range, it does sound like a nice five cylinder. And the gearbox, yeah. It, it finds gears eventually. The problem with the ladder frame chassis is communication isn't ideal. It is somewhat difficult to sort of feel where you are on the road <laughs> because there's no weight over the rear wheels. If you put your foot down at all going below 60 miles an hour they just spin up straight away. And by a huge amount of confidence. Whoa! <laughs> it is good fun though, I'll give it that. Ford, ba 
basically just give every single vehicle they make playful steering. So no matter what vehicle you're in, you can have a bit of fun. You're not going to keep up with a hot hatch down here though, that's for sure. Unless it's flooded, then you'll be driving past it. I need the steering wheel to be closer though. I don't feel like I'm in full control of this thing yet. What a machine. Right, first time round two-wheel drive, then the next time round we'll go in four-wheel drive, see what happens. Now, tyres are going to be the main factor for this thing here, but it doesn't understeer. And look at that, we're going faster than the Range Rover could around here, and it's wet. When the rear goes though, it, uh, it stays gone for a goodly while. Look at that. Sheer power. It's a really interesting engine this. It just sort of sits at about three and a half thousand RPM when you put your foot down. Brakes could be better. They do the job, but they're not super reassuring. Um, yes, I know we're running out of fuel. Yeah, it, it's capable, it's just not super duper confidence inspiring. down even with the traction on. It's got good power though. I'd say if you do want a proper engine go for this one not the smaller four cylinder. It does just have that extra bit of oomph that the car needs. Right let's go into four high and see what happens. The first thing you notice is the steering completely changes weight and it's weird because it's an electronic rack I didn't think that would be the case but you feel it you almost feel the four-wheel drive system connect it's a very strange sensation Mr. Van Driver you've ruined it bad Van Driver and when you put your foot down you get torque steer which is just like it's so weird experiencing that in a pickup truck. Like in a Focus ST, yeah, but a Ford Ranger? Just weird. It holds on slightly better in four wheel drive mode. I mean, you'd kind of expect that though. It's just very hard to tell what the front end is doing. Because there's so little weight over the rear, it's like slightly disconcerting. It just feels very sketchy. Right, let's go for it. Yeah, it's kind of. It's like driving a sponge. The front seems to have huge amounts of grip though, which I guess is a good thing. I just wish it was a little bit more communicative. Let's now get on the motorway and see what this thing's like. Oh, finally on the motorway, going the opposite way this time. So, what's it like? Well, road noise and wind noise are actually not too bad. You know, it's like your average SUV, really. Can't complain. I guess you are literally a mile away from the road, so that would kind of make sense. But even stuff like the steering and suspension is pretty good. The suspension, you do notice it's a bit busy. Visibility is also kind of a weird one. It's fine out the sides and the front, but on the loading bay, you've just got this cover that is like a bubble 
So seeing out your rear view mirror is like pointless, effectively. I mean, you may as well be in a van. And if cars are following you closely from behind, then you literally cannot see them. But overall, it's a, it's a fairly relaxing car to do some miles in. It's really not too bad. Then seating comfort, because this is the wild track, it's actually genuinely quite good. You can adjust the pitch of the base of the seat, as well as obviously recline it, move it forwards and backwards. So yeah, seating comfort is good. And the seats themselves are fairly comfortable as well. The only thing that annoys me about the seating position in this car is that you can't pull the steering wheel towards you. It only goes up and down, which is kind of a big oversight for me. And unfortunately, quality isn't the best, especially when it comes to the steering wheel. The finish is already coming off this thing. This car's only four years old, and you know, it may have done 70,000 miles, but I see a lot of other cars, including Fords, that you know, this hasn't happened to, and it is kind of a shame. I just think they could have put a little bit more thought into the interior of this and made it really special. So for the motorway, driving dynamics are fine. Interior could definitely be better. You know, it's simple stuff. Grippy bits on the cup holders, allow the steering wheel to go in and out as well as up and down. And, you know, I'd be happy then. And if you just had those two things, it would be a much better interior. Everything else like the plastic on the door cards, that would be nice, but it's not super essential. I just feel like they cheaped out because they could there. Now then, spec-wise, if I had three choices, what would I get? Well, the first thing is going to be aftermarket, and that's going to be a better sound system. It's, uh, it's passable at best, I'll say that. When you turn it above half volume, something really strange happens in that the volume kind of sounds like it's going up and down. <laughs> um, I think that's because the speakers are pretty much maxed out and they just can't obviously output what they're being asked to. So when you play really bassy songs, you kind of get a thud and then it just dies straight away. It's a very strange uh, experience. So yeah, first thing is gonna be a good sound system. Uh, next thing, that is hard actually. Next thing, heated seats, important in a pickup truck I think. You know, if you're working when it's cold on a farm all day, something like that, having heated seats is a nice luxury. And then the last thing isn't actually to do with the interior, it's just make sure you get this engine. I think it's a really special engine this, having a five cylinder diesel isn't that common in most cars. And it's nice, it's a really nice engine, it's got loads of torque, loads of grunt and it's just nice to drive it is quite noisy but it makes it you know it, it feels like it suits this particular kind of car really well and the thing is when you're up to motorway speeds having that extra bit of grunt over the four cylinder engine really does help i think right that is the end of our motorway journey and today the end of the review i guess <laughs> uh, so we managed 40.7 miles per gallon out of this thing and we're like in stop-start traffic, so I'm happy with that, can't complain at all. I think for a long journey, it's actually a fairly decent overall car, not just a pickup truck. So, to sum it up, the Amarok would be the better car-like pickup, and the Hilux would be the better pickup pickup. But the Ranger has charm, and an engine that just feels good to use to me. And you know what? It's still kind of fun. As always, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, give it a like and why not subscribe as not only can you see more content like this you can see everything we have for sale which actually includes this Ford Ranger so why not check it out my name's Tom and you've been watching Paragon Cars I'll see you in the next one goodbye